name is Agne and I work at the International Cooperation Department and we have just started uh, and we are about to start our Erasmus days and for this particular purpose we want to uh, speak with two very special and interesting people who have already experienced uh, exchange and mobility and would like to share uh, so what they can offer uh, for this topic for us today. Uh, so we have uh, Gintare Dujuta <laughs> and we also uh, would like to introduce uh, Lucas uh, Bellunas. Hello. And uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's ask them about the, about themselves and um, so what uh, what kind of people are the ones who decide to travel and to experience what the world can offer. So uh, Gintada, uh, I would like you to briefly introduce yourself. Hello. So yeah, I'm Gintaria and I graduated from Vitotas Magnus University uh, last year and uh, I decided to take this Erasmus program because uh, uh, two summers ago I was uh, working um, not in my field but uh, working abroad so this time I wanted to try something in my field in biotechnology. So I found Estonia as a very good place to <laughs> settle a bit and that's how my story started. <laughs> uh, thank you. And uh, Lucas, can you tell us a bit about yourself? So I'm Lucas. I'm still studying till now. I'm now in a grad, a grad course uh, and I always liked Japanese culture. I watched anime since, since a little child, so it was like my dream to travel to Japan. But during the bachelor years, I was a bit afraid to go, but I thought that master, Masters was the last time that I, could, that I had opportunity to travel to Japan. That's why I tried and I was lucky enough and was accepted to travel to Japan. Okay, thank you so much. So we are traveling as far as Estonia and as Japan. Uh, so, uh, so yes, so Lucas mentioned that he is interested in, in Japanese culture and this is like, it was like a, some sort of uh, probably a reason. Was it the, the reason for you just to, you know, to 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 go and see in person how everything looks in yes. Japan? Yes, indeed, not just looks. For example, in anime, there's a lot of Japanese foods and they always look like very delicious as I always wanted to try them myself. And in reality, they were truly delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is really a, well. I noticed that in anime as well that they manage to to draw food in such a delicious way. So uh, I'm glad you got to experience this uh, in person. Uh, so what is your favorite uh, Japanese dish? A dish? Oh, that's a hard question. I I would say oya oyakodon. It's like a chicken with omelet on the top, like bowl of rice and chicken and there's uh, uh, scrambled eggs on the top. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, Gintara, so maybe uh, Estonian cuisine is not as exotic, but what is your favorite, uh, favorite Estonian dish? Hmm. I would say, yeah, it's not really uh, different from Lithuanian, but they found out one really Mm, interesting for us uh, combination, I would say, because in Lithuania we have everything, but we just don't use the things together. So it's like curd with kisiel, and they are putting these together. It looks like a yogurt dessert uh, at the end, but I have never tried uh, in Lithuania such a meal, so in here was really um, unusual, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, but basically Estonians eat uh, just potatoes and 
more potato salads as we are, I would say. <laughs> They're even more crazy about this stuff. <laughs> So this is weird to uh, to hear because we were very proud of Lithuanians were very proud of being like you know um, consumers of potatoes and here we go Estonians are even more like that. <laughs> yes, and I would say that our potatoes is always in better way than theirs because we have <laughs> this Zeppelinus kugelis. They're more fried and uh, they're produced and. Uh, I don't know, maybe in longer period and in more different way. And here are just boiled and mashed, so it's not that interesting as we have. <laughs> oh, I see. So, yes, yeah, so I guess uh, this is for you. Just you can make some sort of workshop uh, to teach Estonians how Lithuanians eat potatoes and uh, and maybe brag a little. <laughs> yes, and I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I also noticed so that you like to hike, yes, in um, in Estonia to walk around and uh, and just experience nature. Um, could you repeat this question because there's some kind of. Uh, uh, so internet. you mentioned that you like uh, Estonian nature. So mm, it's yes. one for as well. Uh, it's actually similar to Lithuania, but uh, probably in Lithuania I was uh, studying just mm -hmm. and then uh, by going back at home, so I was spending time with my family and maybe I had two less time to go to those hikes and everywhere. Of course, they were going, but here when I'm living alone, I every Every weekend I feel that I need nature and yeah, I'm trying to discover a new path in here. So yeah, they have a lot of ponds uh, and uh, they have these interesting color moss as well. So every time it's really uh, interesting to discover these new uh, ways to see. And um, uh, yeah, I would say the nature is here like uh, Lithuania, but they have, although it's really flat earth uh, space in here as well, but for example, forest has more hills, so you never know what is uh, waiting for you in the second step. So it's a bit uh, more adventurous. <laughs> okay, I see, thank you. And look, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, so uh, you said that you are still studying and uh, how did this experience in Japan, you think, helped with your studies here at BMU? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, because, for example, before I went to study, I think I was quite not so broad-minded. But this experience led me to see things from different angles. For example, if we have some issues that are really serious in Europe and all the news talk about it, if you look in Japanese news, there's like one little article about it and it's quite very neutral. And I think this uh, this helped me to look at all the things more neutrally, letting me to look if to, to see things better, I think. That would be it. Okay, so of course, so you can say it broadened your horizons, even though they were not that close as well. And uh, uh, of course, if you are studying uh, culture and then and language, and you can just experience this, you're like firsthand. I think there there cannot be anything better. Uh, so. Gintare, <laughs> we've spoken uh, before a bit <laughs> that uh, sentence that intrigued me. Um, so we know what uh, Lucas is studying. This is also very interesting, but can you just briefly explain to us where are you studying? What are you doing? And uh, so what is the purpose of it? Uh, so I was studying in Mitotos Magnus University in uh, uh, biotechnology field. And then after my graduation, I was looking for internship somewhere and I found this place. And now I took uh, uh, this opportunity to take this internship. And uh, 
So yeah, now I'm working in this as a biotechnologist in uh, this uh, Tartu University. And I have two projects. One is related to this uh, with yogurt design, where I'm doing a lot of fermentations with two different kinds of uh, bacteria species. And then another project is with promoter screening. This probably is a bit harder to understand because with uh, yogurt design project, I'm just trying to improve uh, the yogurt taste and uh, how it looks and the taste and everything. And with this promoter screening, it's uh, improvement of uh, gene uh, expression. So <laughs> probably for normal people, and they like this kind of things is not really matter but uh, for me it's like uh, i have a lot of experience and uh, i get here a lot of experience and uh, i have the possibility to try a lot of new different methods that i never tried before okay so okay. this also seems to uh, so you've you've uh, learned so much here but uh, you just you are looking for opportunities to to learn something uh, more, and this is really amazing. Um, but let's talk about one aspect that we have already uh, briefly discussed, and I would like to elaborate more. So we've spoken about food, but let's speak more generally about uh, the culture. Um, so. What a, so how do you feel uh, in Estonia? So what is the, the culture, the general feeling for like for you to be like a foreigner uh, in this in this country? What is your experience? So I would say I'm really lucky about my blonde hair because everybody thinks that I am as well Estonian. And <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, uh, it wasn't really hard for me to settle down here uh, and but also I uh, noticed the difference between the people in Lithuania and Estonia. Uh, people in Estonia are more colder and closed in their selves I would say but uh, every time you are asking for help someone they're so helpful and trying to trying to help you by heart uh, like uh, uh, they never leave you in a problem and trying to solve the issues very fast. For example, even the emails, it's like talking via messenger, not like an email. If you write for them, they're responding you in maybe some minutes. Even uh, when I was trying to apply for this uh, internship, my supervisor uh, now, uh, my current supervisor, he is like was responding even in five minutes. So it was really uh, unusual for me because in Lithuania you are usually don't do things that fast. <laughs> so you shouldn't be scared by this very cold appearance, the outer shell, because uh, deep inside they are very uh, warm and welcoming. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you. So okay, one one more uh, good thing to know. And now uh, let's go a bit further to Japan and look. So can you just uh, uh, tell us how do you how did you find uh, Japan and their culture? Was it what you expected, or were there things that surprised you? Japan was quite surprising for me because so far away from the western culture it's it's like a really different world everything is built for example similar like like apartments and houses they are built differently and everything looks new and amazing and all, all kind of different and for example the the the, the uh, writing system they have the hieroglyph and writing system because of that i don't know a lot of of these symbols so i had a little problem because like if you look everywhere street names all the information are in that written language so it's quite a different world uh, what really made like what really was different it was like uh, uh, service sector, everyone were so polite, it was st 
care, uh, really, really nice. For example, you go to the store and you feel welcomed. You go to the restaurant and all this welcome, even if they don't mean in reality that they don't feel about you, but this politeness felt like re you uh, that like I was really, really important for them. Mm. So it was quite, quite, quite different, a different cultural aspect. Okay, thank you. And Luca, so did you have some sort of uh, uh, situation uh, like miscommunication because of cultural differences that we should be aware of if we ever come to Japan? Oh, there's there's a lot of things that, for example, Japanese don't like. But very big plus in Japan is that they understand that you are a foreigner. They never ex expect you to be, be very polite or do the things they require you to do. Because I studied before bachelor all these things, I didn't really have some kind of big miscommunication. But, but as I mentioned before, Japanese are really kind to the foreigners and they always will, will help you and things like that. So I wouldn't say that that you should be scared going to Japan, that you might do something that they would think like, oh, for either. Okay, thank you. So they are forgiving uh, to our ways and our ignorance, not knowing. So of course, it is always very useful to, to as you say, study before you go uh, something about the culture. Um, I think that it is not polite, what I've heard myself, and you can correct me, uh, that uh, you should avoid eye contact, yes or no? I hear that, but I was always having eye contact with the people, so <laughs> I don't know, maybe I was breaking this, but <laughs> as, as I mentioned, I never had this kind of backlash because of it. But as you know, Japanese, uh, maybe you don't know, sorry, but Japanese have quite one bad thing that they never shown anyone from their family what they really feel or, or think. They, mm -hmm. they have this two-faced system. It's like they might hate you, but they still be polite <laughs> with you. And, and, and that might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing. So, well, I'm not sure From on one side, you never know and you, it never bothers you on the other side you may never know that someone hates you for the, for the rest of your life so it's as you say like double thing yeah. i'm not sure which which one is better <laughs> you could say they are a little bit colder because of that because you never know how they feel about you but that's 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 their kind of life style Okay, I see. Thank you, Loki. And uh, so, Gintara, did you have some sort of uh, situation uh, regarding the cultural differences with Estonians? Uh, I think no, because uh, we are kind of similar with Estonians. It's not that <laughs> far. Maybe that uh, they don't say hi, that usually, yes, we are. Because in Lithuania, we are also saying that uh, people are maybe not as polite as, for example, South people are. But in here, I feel it even more because uh, sometimes I see the same people, like I'm working here and I see those people every morning, but usually they don't say hi for you. But of course, if we need help, we can always ask them, they are smiling, everything is fine, but they don't, yeah, somehow they don't say hi. <laughs> but so. that's it, I guess. They're just minding their own business <laughs> and yeah, yeah. time okay. is money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, you mentioned that you were lucky enough to be working. Uh, well, not that there is something wrong with being reserved, but you were working with Brazilians and you mentioned a very lovely thing that this was the case of um, extroverts adopting introverts. Yes. <laughs> yes, I would say because uh, I would say that our cultures are more introverts people. We are not always happy for everybody and not always smiling. But uh, in my group now works um, three Brazilians and in another group there's one more as well. Mm -hmm. So they are really 
mm, always uh, like smiling, happy, and always asking to go out and everything. Because in Estonia, we still uh, have the possibility to go outside. So yeah, as I said, it's like this uh, extroverts are adopting introverts. <laughs> yeah, and my one of my supervisors, she's also Brazilian, and it's really nice that we have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, that I have this opportunity because they are, uh, even though they are a bit older than me, but they are um, communicating with me at the same age and uh, acting like really good friends. Thank you. Okay, so uh, you briefly mentioned one thing I wanted uh, to ask you. Uh, so what is about so in Estonia? What is about this no Corona reality? So it is easier in Estonia than it is here in Lithuania. Yes, at the moment, less restrictions. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. um, in Tallinn there was a lockdown around the Christmas, mm -hmm. but uh, but uh, in my city in Tartu. Uh, during this Christmas and New Year's uh, uh, Eve time, I even went to the concert. It was uh, an orchestra concert and there was a lot of people, but the only one, uh, the only restriction was to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can all sold, uh, they can just only sold out half of the tickets uh, in this uh, hall. But otherwise, yeah, people are still can go to the bars and restaurants of course everything is working till 10 but otherwise it's kind of free <laughs> you know, here. Okay. so easier so we are looking forward to, to this to happen here in, in Lithuania as well <laughs> enjoy what you have <laughs> <laughs> yes. and uh, uh, look so how was it uh, in Japan he, it was quite fun because uh, when I lived in Japan, uh, it's not fun like it, the good, 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 good side. It was quite interesting because I lived uh, in Japan where when the Corona started. So first, the Prime Minister of Japan closed the schools, our university included. But people there always use masks when they are sick. So, for example, wearing mask was normal. For them, uh, one of the thing that was at at start a little annoying but still intriguing was they have very big speakers in the schools and uh, three times a day in eight more in the eight in twelve yeah yeah and and in in the middle of in the afternoon and about six they always would say it's Corona don't go outside stay at home if you don't need to go outside. So it was quite interesting and for example a lot of uh, schools took their students back home when, when Corona started but our university let us choose if we want to go back or we want to stay because I thought that Corona wouldn't be so long I thought it will take like a few months so I stayed but it is so, so that would be I don't know how it was Lithuanian, so it's quite hard to compare because I saw Japan. But now I see this this lockdown, maybe for the first time in Lithuania. Maybe that was the, that kind of lockdown. Is it now? Okay, thank you. So, Lucas, one more question for you. So, uh, if you knew what is uh, Coming, uh, so would you be still scared, or would you go to for your exchange e even in the times of Corona? Oh, I uh, the Corona was very interesting because uh, one, it was bad that uh, all the Japanese students uh, go, gone back to their homes from dormitory, so there is no more interactions with like Japanese students. That would be minus, but a very big mm -hmm. plus. At least I think for me one in the life of opportunity was to visit all these popular tourist spots that thousands of people visit every day and I go there and it's like few Japanese people or <laughs> even no one and it was really magical. Uh, you go to these old shrines that were built like five, six hundred years ago and you see they're empty like 
when when that time they were built it's it's quite a magical view so for your question i would say i probably wouldn't go because of the lack of interaction but mm -hmm. on the other hand it it does have some benefits mm -hmm. Yes, I see. So there are always a, a little bit of blessings in disguise because otherwise you wouldn't have seen those shrines like without people. And uh, Gintare, you mentioned that uh, when you work in the lab, <laughs> there is not much of a difference, but still I will ask you the same. So would you go uh, to, would uh, Corona affect your decision when you know what you know? Uh, I would say no, because as I said, <laughs> I have a lot of opportunities here to do, like uh, I even can travel between the cities to see new places, go to the concerts uh, outside. There is a lot of different kind of activities now when there is snow. For example, yesterday I went snow tubing. It means like uh, you're going down uh, the hill uh, with a donut, which is uh, like filled with air. So I would say that no, I still will go, <laughs> would go to Estonia for sure. <laughs> that is an adventurous spirit <laughs> I hear. <laughs> okay, and so just to wrap up, I will ask one more thing, uh, uh, you, Gintaira, and then look. So um, if there is a person uh, who still has a little doubt, um, whether to go on exchange to some sort of maybe internship, what would be your advice for this person? Just to encourage or not? Uh, I would say just to start, uh, do everything little steps, because when you start to do the things, usually they are not as hard as they uh, seem to you. So just start. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And Lucas, what would be your advice? I would agree with Gitara, but also say just do it. Because some some opportunities just come one time in the lifetime. So it's it's always better to grasp the chance before it's twice away. For example, before exchange, I thought exchange wasn't something special. But after exchange, I would do everything to go out again if I would go back in time. So I would suggest everyone just do it, try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for such an inspiring uh, message for both of you. And so, so the first uh, podcast we did was, well, you know, in our little studio at Vitotas Magnus University, and we couldn't do this uh, this time. But I really hope that once uh, the situation is easier and once Gantare, you are in Lithuania, we can just uh, meet, you know, for a symbolic cup of uh, tea to hear more of your uh, impressions and with Lucas as well and maybe not eat curd with Kisiel, <laughs> something <laughs> more <laughs> appetizing. Appetizing, uh, but other than that, it's just you know to. So I hope you both just you know continue to enjoy uh, this uh, experience of other cultures and good luck. I hope that this is not your final adventure and you will continue to travel and find new and beautiful things to explore. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, and, and thank you. So thank you and we will see uh, and if you want to, uh, if you agree, uh, we can and if some people have questions, so I think, do you agree that we can forward them to you? Of course. If, okay. At least in my case, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so thank you and uh, goodbye. Goodbye.